What is up, everybody? Welcome to a live reaction and review to season three of The Boys that dropped on Amazon Prime, or Prime Video, rather. Uh, that's what they want to call themselves now. Tonight, a little bit ahead of time, it was supposed to drop on Friday, but no, we got it tonight. Pretty insane that we got it this early in the process um, because I was looking forward to this one. Caught up with all the episodes uh, earlier this week, and so I was just sitting around waiting for episode eight to drop, and it dropped tonight, and I had an absolute blast watching it. Uh, I've got like a bunch of notes compiled here into a Word document as I was watching, just making a bunch of notes and what have you. But look, there was so much that happened in this finale. We got a bunch of battles in the last 20 to 30 minutes. I mean, some one-on-ones between Maeve and Homelander, between Butcher and Soldier Boy. Uh, also, Starlight getting involved there with Soldier Boy as well. Mother's Milk, Kamiko, Frenchie, all jumping into that battle as well. And then you had... Homelander trying to stave off Va uh, Maeve and trying to keep a hold of Ryan and make sure he was okay. And so there was a lot going on there in those final battles uh, uh, that was just insane to watch. And of course, we had the X factor of Ryan being brought in through this entire season and having it pay off like it did in the finale, where you have Homelander trying to connect, trying to find a family, which has been, in essence, his, his most messed up thing that he thinks a family is somehow going to solve his life put it all back together and we saw here that you know there's a there's a lot more to come as a family than than you might expect from the outside and him wanting to control what his family can do and give to him it was insane to see we got more with may we, we got her breaking out uh from the uh, from the truck and everything like that we got her busting out and doing her thing and setting up the big fight there with homelander Huey also coming to terms with using that compound B, what that was all about, how it connected to his dad. A lot of these things in this show were about dads, right? Uh, Homelander is the son to Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy being his dad, Homelander being a dad to Ryan, Butcher being a, a kind of a stepdad to Ryan, Mother's Milk and his relationship with Janine, but also with Todd, the stepfather to Janine, uh, and then Huey talking about his dad in that car ride with Starlight as well. So there was a lot of father-son stuff, a lot of conversations about family, a lot of conversations about how, like, what the hell is normal mean? And, of course, exploring the idea of if, if anyone can actually be a hero. I think three seasons in, and certainly for those of us who read the, uh, the boys' comic books, uh, as we were going along, it's this idea of, okay, once you expose that everybody has these tendencies – that when they become heroes to make mistakes and then use their superpowers or their connection to a corporation to cover it up, fine. Okay, so basically all heroes can be corrupt. Great. But you've got to have now as a counter, you've got to have that one person who doesn't do that kind of stuff, that one person who doesn't get involved in that. And certainly it felt like Mother's Milk and Starlight were the representatives of that in their respective groups. Um, who don't get involved with being tempted by the nonsense and try to walk the straight and narrow path as much as possible. And so we saw that in this finale as well with Starlight kind of reading Huey a little bit of the riot act out of love, out of care for him because she didn't want him to die from using that compound B and she doesn't want him to feel inadequate. Remember last episode, they had that conversation after he teleported them out of the hero gas. Was it two episodes out of the hero gasm? And she says to him, I thought you were okay. I thought you were okay with the fact that I was a hero and you, uh, or a superhero and you weren't. You realized you knew that I loved you, and that was what was important, right? But no, Huey, uh, like men sometimes do, and certainly you ladies who may be watching uh, this tonight with me live or watching later uh, know that sometimes men can be quite intimidated. Well, most of the time, let's be real, can be quite intimidated by a woman with power. And so we finally saw it with Huey. But then Huey comes to the realization in the car that the reason this is all happening is because of what he saw his father go through when his when his wife walked out, when Huey's mom walked out, how he could not handle it in terms of the sadness, right? But he was still there every day feeding his uh, sons, clothing his sons, uh, taking them to school, all of that. That shows real strength when you can swallow your pride and not fall into the trap uh, of uh, depression and sadness that is there and is very real. Uh, and somehow find a way to keep going day by day by day so you can provide and you can um, be a real parent to a child, it says a lot. And so Huey kind of realizing that 
That's where his uh, um, inadequacies, were, inadequacies were coming from. And who knew the power of a pizza roll to get you into that mindset for sure. So we're going to talk about all of that here as we go along. And this is a spoiler review. So if you haven't seen the finale, you should probably go and watch the finale. Or else, if you don't care and you want to hang around, then feel free to hang around. I, I got a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun talking about this kind of stuff with you. I've got 40 of you watching me right now live. Please make sure to hit a like on this video. Uh, and if you're watching later, hit a like and leave a comment down below as well. The super chats are open. Streamlabs are open. I pinned it in the chat. If you guys want to send stuff in, ask any questions as we go along here through this review. So I'm going to take it the piece by like storyline by storyline. So that's how we're going to start off. Uh, and let's talk about Hom Homeland and Soldier Boy and Ryan. And uh, I mean, uh, listen, this has been one hell of a season to show us uh, what ex what Jensen Ackles can do with this character of soldier boy look i have never seen one episode of supernatural i've never seen it just always felt it was one of those like cw shows or upn shows or wherever it was when it started and i never was that interested in seeing it you know same thing with like what the um the 4400 the 100 whatever it's called the specials all those things i just i never have been interested in seeing those kinds of shows but after watching Jensen Ackles this entire season as Soldier Boy, my mind has completely been changed. And I may take a trip into Supernatural and see if this show is as good as so many people have said it is. You know, it lasted for like 10 seasons. But his Soldier Boy was so incredible. And look, we got a window in this finale to more uh, about his upbringing, right? We found out last, last episode, I think it was, from what was it, Mind, whatever his name is, Mind, the Mind Guy that he actually never stormed the beats, uh, beaches of Normandy. He went, or no, it was uh, it was from uh, the legend, from Paul Reiser, who said that, hey, you know, Soldier Boy never stormed the beaches. He stormed the beaches seven days later or 10 days later for a photo op. He never fought the Nazis, all of those kinds of things. So everything that's been a kind of um, attributed to Soldier Boy is an absolute lie. And then you have that moment with him and, and Butcher where they're trading stories about their old man. You find out, that he's a fucking kid that comes from wealth. He's a privileged, snotty kid who is mad because his dad uh, didn't care about him or thought he was a disappointment or was ashamed of him because he kept fucking up. So to get back at his dad, he goes and uses his, his father's connections to get into the program for Dr. Vaught so that he can be one of the first people to get the, the, the Vought serum. And he becomes Homelander, which is essentially the Captain America. I'm sorry, he becomes Soldier Boy, which is essentially the Captain America of uh, of this uh, um, uh, universe, and we see that he uh, he did all these things. He said, uh, you know, he, he became superpowered. He had the ticker tape parade, and when he came back to talk to his dad, his dad said, "You took a shortcut, and no real man would cheat." So this idea that uh, the father, the burrowing into the self confidence, burrowing into the self esteem of a son, hey. Those of you who are sons, those of you who are who are dads and have had the uh, and are uh, and have sons and who are dads who've been sons to other dads, you know that that can actually be a real thing. Certainly, that was something I had to navigate for many many years. My father, who did love me, but at times said some stuff that really destroyed my self esteem, destroyed my self worth, and you have to navigate that kind of stuff, which I had to do through therapy, so you can kind of let it all go, forgive them, and come out the other side. It's not easy to do. And Soldier Boy doesn't strike me as one of those people who'd go to therapy and do the work to try to climb out the other side. But certainly was a very interesting exchange between Butcher and Soldier Boy because Butcher comes from a, a fucked up father. We saw the flashbacks earlier in the season of him with his brother and what was going on there and how his dad was physically abusive to them with belts and tried to get them drunk. And even when... Uh, when uh, Butcher beat up uh, one of his counselors at school, his dad didn't punish him. He rewarded him. So just a messed up kind of approach, this, uh, this idea uh, here in this whole season. And certainly a indictment for any of the men who are watching the boys. And I'm not surprised that this is a predominantly male viewership. Hopefully, the men who are terrible to their kids or, or sons, the, the fathers who are terrible to their sons, who are older, who have sons, the grandsons, all of that. Hopefully they're watching this show and learning the lessons and taking a look in the mirror about how to actually treat their children, how the ramifications and the consequences of that come about. And certainly we see at the end of the episode when Homelander comes down to that rally, you know, Homelander essentially, well, hey, y'all might get pissed off when I say this, but Homelander essentially being the Trump 
of this. Uh, I mean, it's undeniable how he's the Trump of this uh, season. And everybody who is rabid around him, that's essentially the MAGA crowd who is supporting Homelander, no matter what he does. When he flies into that rally there uh, and you see the SS people for Stormfront still supporting Stormfront, uh, ironically, wearing the same kind of black uh, uh, costumes that you've seen out in the protests from some people who are on that extreme right side of things. Um, and then you have the one Starlight person in yellow throws that thing and hits Ryan. I think it's a bottle or, a, or some kind of uh, object. And Homelander flips out and destroys that dude's head with his laser eyes. And there's that moment of like, oh my God, what's happened here? And Todd, who is maybe one of the worst stepfathers in the world, cheers it on. And that begins the cheering of the whole crowd cheering on the Homelander just killed a dude. And you hear in the uh, the lines out there going, yeah, that's right. That's how America does it. That's what blah, blah, blah. So you see that very clearly, this uh, idea of violence equaling right. You know, being violent equals you being right. That kind of stuff. And so you see that coming through. And then you see Ryan's face as that violin score is playing. You see Ryan's face start to smile. So the father has taught the son violence right that violence is the way to handle things so clearly these are the lessons right todd taking janine mother milk's daughter to these homelander rallies in essence that's what mother's milk mother's milk is, is scared of is that he, it's going to teach janine violence it's going to teach that violence is the way to answer things and then of uh, unfortunately mother's milk gives into his instinct when todd ins insults his parenting and punches him out you know he could clearly kill him really with a punch like that as big as mother's milk is so even he has to be concerned about the lessons he is teaching his daughter in the moment. Of course, we see him later talking to his daughter, talking, feeling terrible about what he did. And his daughter, of course, forgives him and says, you're my hero. So, you know, there's so much here between fathers and their children throughout this whole season that comes through. And it's really chilling, that last shot of Ryan as he smiles. It's sad, but it's the message there that you need to be aware that you passing on or preaching violence or committing violence in front of your child, you're essentially saying, yes, this is the way to handle it. Yes, this is the way to go. So it's a brutal, crazy, sex-filled, gory world, the boys. But at the bottom of it is this fantastic idea of making people take a look at their behavior to confront the fact that this is repetitive patterns and this is why we're in the situation that we're in. The boys reflects our world really well. And so to me, I was... Very, very impressed by that on so many levels here. Uh, Haskell says, Hi, John. Anthony Starr. Anthony Starr des deserves every award. Wow, yeah. Anthony Starr was fantastic. I mean, Anthony was so good. I, you know, I got a chance to interview him uh, through the Hollywood Critics Association uh, about a few, uh, I think three or four weeks ago. Um, I got to interview him and Aaron Moriarty, who plays Starlight. One of the questions I asked him was, how do you, you know, come up with the faces that you come up with this season, because I think this season more than any other season, there's been that like just gritting the teeth kind of uh, anger or just in, impatience with a situation. And you see it in Anthony's face. And it, I told I told him it said it almost feels like your skeleton is regressing from your skin. That's what it feels like to me when I see him do those moments like he goes deeper inside of himself so that the face is doing its best to hold back what he really wants to do, which is to just tear everybody apart in the room all the time. And you see that come through so clearly in certain moments. And he's just incredible. Look, it is not an easy part to play. He's a heel with levels. And it takes a really good actor to have those moments. Like when he's defending Ryan, you have a moment where you're like, oh my God, is he really, does, is, is he making this turn? Is he caring about Ryan? I remember Ryan comes up to him after the fight when it's going to be him and Butcher, they might go at it again when everything is kind of like settled down for a few seconds. It's Ryan who comes up and takes his hand and says, Dad, I want to go home. Please, can we go home? And he ignore, Ryan ignores Butcher's please to make him stop uh, uh, going with Homelander. But no, Ryan's going to go with his dad. That's his biological father. That's who he's going with. So you see that. And so you think, oh, maybe. But then, of course, he flies him down into that rally. And then his son sees that violence is the way to handle things. So it's going to be very curious to see how this series season goes along the next season for sure. Because by the end of the uh, uh, episode, he has killed off or gotten rid of every member of the seven except for Noir. I'm uh, sorry, except for the Deep and um, A Train. 
you know, he sends a train out to talk to the press or whatever. We don't see a train in the last parts of the show, but we do see the deep seeing his ex-wife. Uh, now I imagine ex-wife or separated wife who apparently wrote a book really, really fast. and was able to go out there and start promoting it. But you see as the deep is sliding back into his sadness, this picture of, of, of him, of, um, of uh, a Homelander sitting in the chair and the deep sitting next to him. So this is all he has left is this picture, his devotion to Homeland, his desire to be part of the seven again. This is what it's led him to. And, you know, we're seeing these January 6th hearings and we're seeing these people come out and speak about how much loyalty Trump demanded of them. You cannot escape the connections. You cannot escape the symbolism here that listen, this is what you're going to be left with. And these are the things you're going to have to do just to stay in the orbit. And we're hearing, you know, as people testify more and more, we're hearing more about people who have violated their oaths, violated their oaths of the Constitution, violated their oaths, just to be able to keep Trump alive or keep Trump in a position to possibly get that second term or, or, or commit a coup to steal back second term. You cannot escape the symbolism here, the connective uh, tissues to our world uh, throughout that situation, for sure. Uh, John Lee in here. Thank you, John. He sent, uh, I really enjoyed the finale, but didn't love it as much as the rest of the episodes. I do think the finale does set up season four nicely and has me curious about next season. That's for sure. John, I'd be curious to know what didn't work for you in the finale. Was it the, were, did you not get enough resolution? Did you not feel that the resolution for certain characters, uh, did it not work out for you? Certainly we see Maeve sacrificing herself to save um, everybody and essentially what you think she's going to die with soldier boy. But once again, as we've seen in a number of recent uh, TV shows and uh, movies from a few weeks ago, people you think die don't really die. And so it's a weird kind of swerve that's happening lately. And I don't know why that's happening with a lot of projects. Cause I was fully willing to accept that Maeve sacrificed herself for to destroy soldier boy but then we find out both soldier boy is still alive and Maeve is still alive she just lost her powers and so she's going to go and try to live uh, another life and i wonder if maybe that's the last we see uh of Maeve, of the actress uh who plays Maeve. sorry D dominique mcgillicott uh, mcgillicott uh, mcgillicott i hope i wonder if that's the last we see of her because in essence by the end of the show she's kind of handed things off to starlight saying you don't need me anymore. You can go and do your own thing. And, you know, you're that, you know, that girl that was at the um, crying in the bathroom when I first met you, yeah, that was the day you started saving me. So it was a very nice exchange, very sweet exchange. And we see Starlight give up the costume to become one of the boys. And we certainly see Frenchie pushing back now and calling it a democracy because uh, Kamiko has helped Frenchie kind of find his belief in himself, right? Just like Frenchie helped Kamiko find the belief in herself, she gets him to stop, I think it was snorting the coke, and take a look at himself and change who he is. And I think that was a pretty awesome uh, situation for sure. Oh, okay, Dominique is not returning. I think it was a personal choice to leave. Oh, well, there you go. That's a shame. That's a shame uh, for sure. Um, uh, Amaya says, I feel like the finale left us at the same point the season started with not, en not enough happened well, I, I think a lot happened in that finale i mean soldier boy uh, was uh, put back into stasis homelander is even worse now with a sidekick that is his son essentially that's his bucky i mean i hope you didn't miss that connection that's essentially his uh his uh his bur his uh sorry his robin his bucky is whatever you want to say his Superboy, even if you want to go superman Superboy. That's essentially who Ryan is going to be. So that's even more scarier that he's going to have a companion who is, who is his family. Uh, and we're going to find out in season four how Homelander behaves as a dad. Remember, I mean, Soldier Boy, when they're having that exchange with Butcher about being a father or, or, or sorry, what happened to their uh, what happened with their fathers in the past? Home uh, Soldier Boy says, you know, um, I wanted to have kids. I, I always wanted to have kids of my own uh, because I wanted to do it better than the old man could do it. And then when he sees Homelander and Homelander is telling him, hey, you know, we can we can be together like it's you and me. No one can stop us. And I've, you've got your grandchild here. And he's like, you know, he's like conjuring up these tears. I mean, Homelander is a bona fide sociopath, an unstable, unsettling sociopath who is almost unkillable. So that's scary on so many levels. And so the fact that he is here trying to express some semblance of emotion, because remember, he's 
uh, I don't want to say he's a test tube baby, but in essence, he's a lab baby. So he's never really learned how to connect with people, how to converse with people, how to, you know, everything is always disappointment. All these situations that he finds himself in, he's always disappointed. Even when he's calling out uh, a train and the deep and, and uh, Ashley and saying, you know, I thought when they, you know, I thought when they gave me a team, they would be my family and this is what I got. But what Homelander doesn't understand, and I think it's going to be interesting to see if they explore this in season four, is that you don't choose your fucking family. Your family is given to you by who you're born into, what family you're born into. So it's how you navigate that family, how you uh, create relationships with that family, how you make it work with that family, how you sacrifice for that family, and they sacrifice for you. That's how you establish family. He wants to have a family that listens to him, caters to him, sucks his dick, essentially, and kisses his ass uh, instead of calling him out for some of the um, worser tendencies in his nature. And that's what Homelander, Homelander is the worst kind of father because he wants to be a father who is nothing but respected and never questioned. And that's always going to lead to rebellion within the kids. And I have a feeling that Ryan, down the road, there is going to be some serious um battles between those two and if they end the season if they ever end the series i got a feeling it's going to be ryan ryan who's going to have to take out homelander and uh and and put him away once and for all so that'll be fascinating to see for sure uh john lee says uh, yeah i still love season three overall but i think season two had a stronger finale i think ryan will eventually be the one to take down home <laughs> exactly what i said nice john uh take down homeland fyi the boys have been releasing episodes thursday night around 8 p.m eastern time oh i didn't know that okay well there you go because they said episodes on friday that's what it says there on amazon prime episodes on friday so uh it seemed odd that they dropped it felt like they dropped it a little bit early tonight so there you go john being the well actually guy well actually come on john come on john don't be the well actually guy no one likes the well actually guy uh let's see um let's see if i've got any stream labs that have come through uh okay no stream labs yet the uh i pinned it in the chat if you want to send some stuff in let's keep going on the rest of this stuff here what else have i got um yeah when it gets a chance to do so disappointment people say repeat the same mistakes yeah yeah a soldier boy saying he would do it better than his dad but then when he gets the chance to do it better than his dad he says to homelander exactly what his dad said to him you're a disappointment uh, you're weak. You're a crybaby. He says all these things. So essentially, repeating the same patterns that his dad repeated. And that's the truth. If you don't, if you don't do your therapy or take a look at yourself or do some self analysis, you can have the desire to be better than your father and not repeat the same mistakes. But you're going to find yourself defaulting to the same mistakes because that's all you know. So I think there's something, something really powerful being said in that moment even though that moment is played for some chilling back and forth between him and homelander there's also a little bit of a message being sent through this whole thing uh as well uh let's see butcher yeah remember he left ryan because he wanted to destroy homelander right right and remember this i mean the the ryan situation happens because in, in essence butcher gets so consumed with destroying and killing homelander because in a way that's his own personal shit because he's mad about the fact that homelander slept with becca and becca had the baby uh, and of course, Becca was killed last uh, or died or was killed, died, whatever you want to say, last season uh, uh, through uh, Ryan's hands. So this idea that, oh, he left Ryan in this season to go and pursue Homelander and kill Homelander. Well, Ryan is left with grace. So he's left in this kind of open, vulnerable, needy position. And remember, when uh, Butcher walks away, Ryan rips off the necklace, throws it down, says, you know, says, you're not my daddy because you're leaving me and so butcher thinks he's doing what's best for the situation to go after homelander and, and i have to believe that a little piece of him is still pissed off that he's having to take care of becca and homelander's child and so he may he may care about ryan for becca but he can't deny that ryan is also half of uh, half homelander so uh, him taking off is what opens the door for homelander to come in so it's it's a matter of like, you know, if you're an absentee father, a child is going to try to find father figures wherever he can. And certainly when when Homelander shows up, uh, thanks to that Congresswoman, um, uh, Congresswoman's uh, Victoria Newman's connection or uh, information, then that situation kind of opens the door for Homelander to take 
uh, and lead Ryan and become Ryan's father. So, you know, this idea you have to balance these things. You don't spend enough with your time to, with your son to establish a connection, even if it's your, you know, your adopted son because of uh, Becca's request. Well, I think he, in essence, uh, let Becca down by being so obsessed with Homelander that he wasn't able to be there to keep establishing a strong connection with Ryan. So Ryan drifts off. And when Homelander shows up, because he's a he's a, has his biological father, or he's his biological father, there's a stronger connection there. And certainly you see Ryan uh, indulge in that when Homelander says, I'm never going to leave you. I'm always going to be here for you. Even says, you know, what you did last season, that was an accident. And I know about accidents. So he's offering him forgiveness and abs absolution and also love or what he thinks might be love. And so Ryan gravitates to that because clearly he's a, uh, He's a lonely boy. He's a messed up boy because of the situations. And so uh, those are the moments you need to be there for your, uh, for that child to kind of guide them on the right path. So um, let's see. And it's funny too, because butcher is the one that like forces soldier boy to stay focused, says to him, Hey, you didn't name him. You didn't raise him. It's not your son. Uh, when he's talking about Homelander, but then when Ryan is threatened, um, Butcher is the one that blinks, and that's and and he, Soldier Boy calls him out for that. You know, you blinked. I'm here. I can kill Homelander right now, but you're blinking because you you want you don't want me to to mess up Ryan. And that's the thing. At the end of the day, this is what villains always rely on: is that good people default to caring about people, uh, and that's their natural instinct. So sometimes the good the bad guys get away, or the bad girls, whatever you want to say, get away. The villain, let's just say that the villains get away because uh, good people do good things. And that's essentially what you see here with, with Butcher going after um, uh, Soldier Boy. Yeah, and also does, kill, does killing Homelander mean another one will come right out? And that's another thing about this that I think is very interesting too is um, we know that Homelander was created after they took out Soldier Boy and they took out Soldier Boy because he was just running rampant, doing all kinds of stuff we heard. We hear about his sexual exploits. We hear about all the things that all the ways and advantages that he took throughout his life because he was clearly a fucked up kid who was made even more fucked up uh, by the Vought, right? And that's something that Kamiko talks about in the uh, in last episode, I think she said, or two. Yeah, when she was telling Frenchie that she wants to get the Compound B again uh, back in her body because she understands now that that is a, an extension of who she is, essentially the Captain America stuff, right? The, the serum only makes you... Um, more of what you already are, right? And so you see that here uh, in this situation too. Um, this idea of, oh, well, Homelander uh, is a bad guy because he's raised in the test tube. They think they can control Homelander, but they can't. So they've fucked up twice now, Vaught has. Both Soldier Boy and Homelander essentially are two fuck-ups who mess up the world uh, and are villains, and in essence, in hero's clothing. Uh, and so we see that. So Vaught keeps messing this up. And I wonder what the next step is going to be. I also wonder about Victoria Newman's daughter, because remember, he, she put the uh, compound B in her, claiming that, you know, this is going to be a way for you to protect yourself against the supers and against other anybody who might be coming after you. So how is that going to manifest itself? So I think we're going to see Homelander with Ryan and Victoria with her daughter uh, next season and how that's going to be an interesting thing. And I imagine they're going to hook up at some point uh, down the road as well. Um, so, and, and I'm saying this, are they saying all supermen will be evil and indulge your baser instincts, butcher and soldier boy? Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. All right, let's go to Starlight and Huey here. So many changes in their relationship this season, right? I mean, we started out, Huey is working for the government, working for Victoria Newman. Starlight is doing a thing there at the seven. She's figuring out how to maybe, uh, she's going to be in power. She's going to be the co- leader of the team thanks to edgar uh but then victoria newman turns on edgar uh, in order to protect or she claims in order to protect her daughter uh, and goes with homelander which screws edgar over and then that uh moves starlight out of the position of power and for about two or two episodes two episodes two and a half episodes she lives in fear of homelander uh and what he might do and uh to her friend as well was it the uh, was it alan or alex or anthony something like that the the guy who came in who was part of essentially the star search approach to things or America's got talent approach to things. And he ends up getting destroyed by Homelander. And um, because she, he asked a train to help him and starlight take on Homelander, which is sadly what happened. So we see starlight kind of slowly go enough is enough here. Fuck it. 
If he kills me, he kills me. I can't live like this, right? A, a, a woman in a terrible uh, situation. And of course, you have an a, a episode, I think, where Homelander becomes her boyfriend for the public, you know, but uh, which is pretty unsettling and, and chilling as well. But this idea of being in an abusive relationship, she's essentially in an abusive relationship with Homelander. So she pushes back by videotaping him, by having evidence, by doing on social media. And that last video is the one that really sells out Homelander and causes the stock price to drop, causes Homelander all kinds of embarrassment. And so they start a campaign against Starlight, that uh, which is complete and utter false. And again, right, false uh, fake news happening over there on Fox News and all those other places pushing bullshit narratives that's just like uh, the laptop and all that nonsense. They're pushing that idea of hunt of uh, sorry of uh, of Starlight, you essentially being a trafficker and who talks about sex trafficking but the right right. So it's it's all there. It's all there. I'm not making a leap to make the connection of Fox News and One America News and all that shit. It's a connection there, and they're, they're making a commentary about it essentially that they fabricate shit to try to get people to buy this nonsense. And sure enough, there it is. You know, just like the PizzaGate or whatever it was. This idea that the uh, Democrats are over there with a cabal drinking babies' blood and sleeping with little children. This is just being pedophiles, which is absolutely nuts. So you see that with Starlight, Star being painted that her house, that her runaway house, which she you know created for charity, whatever, is is actually a drug, uh, sorry, a sex trafficking ring, and whatever. So you see that coming through. So Starlight has to navigate all of that. Uh, and also has to navigate the dealing uh, dealing with Huey's feelings of inadequacy. And I touched on that earlier as well. He tries the compound V. He enjoys. It's very funny how that works out. How every time he teleports, he's naked. It's very funny how, how those scenes when it happens. But of course, it all leads to that moment where he kind of admits to her that, um, you know, that he's feeling inadequate next to her and he wanted to matter. Uh, and she said, you don't, you know, she says to him, that's never been our relationship. Why does that matter to you now? It's never been our thing. So um, it's very, those are some really powerful moments. And he does apologize to her and saying for, you know, I apologize for putting this on you. This wasn't about you. This was about me and my issues, uh, how I saw my dad. And I've come to terms with that. And I played a pizza roll, saved the day in that situation. And certainly um, in that moment, uh, uh, in the finale, when they're at the studio where Starlight is going to take on, uh, soldier boy, he looks at the compound V that he brought just in case, like an in emergency break glass, and he thinks better of it. He uses his mind, which is what Huey's really good at, and turns up the power, turns up the light, so Starlight can defend herself, fly, and woof, shoot a huge blast uh, towards uh, um, Soldier Boy. So learning that to take the shortcut for him leads to death, but also. It uh, undercuts the gifts that he actually has, the things that he uses, like his mind, that are just as powerful as any, or can be just as powerful as any kind of superhuman ability or what have you, right? Remember that Soldier Boy took the shortcut, and that's where it becomes an issue. Um, Kamiko and Frenchie, also a very interesting and fun relationship throughout the whole season. We saw those changes as well, how things were happening between them. Uh, we see, you know, um, the stuff with little Nina, one of the most brutal scenes uh, of the season when uh, uh, Frenchie is essentially using a bike lock to a pole while uh, Kamiko is tied there and has to fight off all those people. And eventually little Nina gets away, which I didn't like. I thought they should kill little Lena and little Nina. I thought um, Kamiko should absolutely kill little Nina. Uh, but she doesn't, and so I imagine we'll see her next season as well. But the process here, as Frenchie is trying to build her up, Frenchie doesn't realize that he's also still feeling terrible about himself, feeling guilty about all that stuff. You know, there's that scene in the bathroom in the finale where he says, you know, Nina was right about my father with the chain around my neck. It's just, you know, I'm constantly going from one person to another who is yanking that chain. It's never stopped. So again, father to son, right? This idea of repetitive patterns Coming back as well, this idea of, well, you damaged your son at such a young age um, that he never developed this idea of being able to stand on his own. You cut out his will, you destroyed his self-esteem, and you essentially turned him into someone who can be manipulated by stronger energies in the world. And so seeing Frenchie stand up to Butcher, Frenchie is saying, no, I'm not going to what, shut my crab hole or whatever he says um, there, and, and um, bolstered by Kamiko is a really powerful thing to see 
uh, there in the finale. And you love seeing their relationship develop. They're a fantastic uh, couple. And, um, you know, Kamiko, as we said, learned that lesson about the V. And we talked about Mother's Milk dealing with his guilt over his family with Soldier Boy, you know, him wanting to take vengeance on Soldier Boy, but he doesn't, he waits, you know, he waits for the right time, waits for the right moment. Um, we talked about him punching Todd in the driveway. Uh, and uh, also, in a way, yeah, as I said, he's no different than Homelander in exposing his child to hatred. So he has to kind of make the changes there as well. Uh, and let's talk about Ashley and also Ashley, one of my favorite relationships in the show this season. Ashley gets a personal assistant. She's moved up high enough that she can get a personal assistant. Um, and also, Ashley, uh, the actress plays it so well throughout the whole season. It's so good. But Ashley, I mean, you got to give some love here to uh, um, uh, to Colby Minifi. Uh, Colby is so good in this show. Look, I don't like Ashley. I think she's one of the worst human beings because she willingly stays at this job just to be able to, to have the status and move up the chain at Vought. Uh, and she is also someone who's pretty broken uh, from her own probably parenting and so she comes un she kind of s fears and respects Homelander at the same time, which is really unsettling. And you see that as it plays out uh, throughout the season, certainly, and her ripping out her hair, which is a, a thing that actually does happen. And so her having the wig and when she's removing the wig, oh, my God, what a moment when, she, when he makes her remove the wig. He wants to embarrass her, right? He wants to kind of show um, how... I don't know, for lack of a better term, how unattractive she looks without the hair, without the wig and how damaged. And it's almost like it gets a glee out of it, you know, and this is the deal. When you have people with power who are not responsible with their power um, and indulge in their worser instincts, haven't done the therapy, aren't good, aren't not necessarily aren't good people, but aren't able to limit their more negative impulses, you get people around them who gravitate to work with them because they're strong personalities, but those people take advantage of those people with low self-esteem or low self-worth because they instinctively know that those people feel terrible or feel low about themselves. So the people with the stronger energies manipulate that. And in the end, you see a lot of people who suffer from mental health situations because they've got a boss or they've got someone that they work for or a cult leader or a religious leader or a parent or whatever, a teacher could be anything who um, takes advantage of their uh, low self-esteem or the low self-worth and, uh, and turns them into a basket case in essence. Uh, and so that's, those are the things you got to break out of. You got to break out of those situations. You got to find a way out. Uh, and Ashley's way of dealing with it is to rip her hair out, which is so sad to see. And the deep's way of dealing with it is just completely acquiesce to everything because for whatever reason, he needs that status. He needs that power in his life. So you see that for sure. Uh, let's see if we got, I think I had another one come through here. We got 68 of you watching. Thank you so much for joining me. Please make sure you hit a like on this video. And if you're watching it later, leave a comment for sure. Uh, Secular Monk says, what was kind of surprised to see Noir go out that way. Yeah. Is he dead? Cause I mean, we thought uh, Maeve and uh, soldier boy were dead, but they did not die. Is Noir dead? I mean, he pulled out his guts essentially left him, uh, uh, bleeding out and those uh, animated creatures were there that came through which were pretty unsettling um, in, in the show and they're the ones that goaded him to go back so who were these creatures were they the other parts of his brain um, have they been there the whole time like these are these questions because clearly noir was quite capable of speaking and was quite fine back in the 1940s but in that battle with, or 1950s, I think, but in that battle with um, a soldier boy that we see in animated uh, portrayal, he gets his head bashed in by that shield uh, and parts of his part of his brain comes out. So a uh, pretty insane situation there. But yeah, the way Noir go out, I don't know if he goes out for, I mean, we do see the, the little uh, animated creatures die out in his mask. So maybe he's dead. Um, but the fact that he comes in with the helmet means that he ripped off, um, uh, Noir's uh, helmet. And the fact that he, I mean, the fact that Homelander revealed that he could always tell what Noir was thinking because he could actually see through his mask. That was a nice surprise. Although that was a cool, brilliant surprise. He can tell when he's lying, when he's not lying, when he's enjoying something, when he's not enjoying something. So 
the fact that you could you could probably go back and rewatch two seasons of the boys and catch those scenes between Homeland and Noir and see if Anthony Starr is doing something in those moments to convey that he can actually see Noir's face and Noir's reaction to whatever he's telling him or whatever's going around in the room. That could be a fun thing to think about in rewatch. So yeah, see, we're remembering flashback they showed Soldier Boy crushes his uh yeah, and his head it bashed his head and he and he leaves. So I don't know. We shall see. If he, if he stays alive or not, uh, for sure. Uh, let's see. Let's move on here to what else? Oh, with A-Train. Yeah, A-Train. I mean, A-Train's a really interesting um, thing. And I'm going to have to walk into a little bit of a minefield here when I'm talking about this. So I hope I'm very careful when I talk about this. But A-Train is an interesting character because certainly he's a black man. And this episode, uh, this season, he was like egged on by his brother or the guilt he feels that he doesn't have his brother's instinct for social justice his instinct to lead people to fight for his people. So he, because he's in this position, he thinks, Hey, I should be talking about, you know, my people, I should be going back to Africa. We should be focusing on the fact that I'm black, which essentially is he's essentially paying, play, paying lip service to it because this isn't a natural impulse of his. He thinks it's a great next PR move for him. So it already rings hollow and very shallow for sure. And then, you know, the situation with Black Hawk, with Blue Hawk, was it, and, and him trying to bring him down to apologize, him trying to make an effort to, um, you know, connect with the community. So people come to him and complain about Blue Hawk and Blue Hawk's patrolling in those areas being uber racist, which is something he did not care about because he was too busy cashing his checks. He was too big. He's like an OJ Simpson, right? He's like, well, I don't care about the black community. I'm off doing my own thing, making my own money, blah, blah, blah. I only care about them when I'm accused of possibly killing my ex-wife. So that's what you see there. A-Train essentially not really feeling he's connected to the black community in the way that his brother is, right? There's a difference. And so he feels inadequate in that way. So his way of addressing that is to kind of clumsily confront uh, uh, Blue Hawk about this situation. And then when the the fight ensue and he come and he surprises his brother. Remember, he surprised his brother by bringing Blue Hawk to that uh, uh, gathering, that meeting, uh, and setting up a photo op and a video op to have him apologize. Uh, and then of course, Blue Hawk drops all the "All Lives Matter" nonsense and drops all those things. So and then throws his brother and paralyzes A Train's brother. So when Blue when A Train sees him and and kills Blue Hawk um, and almost dies. Ash, in a way, I don't know if Ashley does this on purpose. I don't know if Homelander told her to do it. I don't know how anybody came up with this idea, but they put Blue Hawk's heart in um, A Train's body, so in order that he so he can run again. So essentially, he's using a racist's heart in his own body. So it's a man. It's a hell of a thing that they're putting him through. Uh, and his own brother, when he goes to see him in the finale rejects him and you see that he's back to wearing his old outfit he's going to start running again get his endorsements again but his brother is pissed that he killed blue hawk because he's like i didn't want that to happen i wanted his mugshot on tv and you took that away from me um you know just get out of your murderer get out of my house you know he tries to help him when he falls over and he says no don't touch me get away so essentially his brother is calling him out for being um someone who parachutes in to pretend to really care about black issues, but doesn't really do the work, doesn't really kind of step in and do that. And we see that all the time, for sure, in, in communities of color, that people come in and use certain things in order for themselves, but don't really contribute to that community. And so you're seeing that happening for sure with A-Train. Uh, so uh, it's almost like they're saying in a way, and again, this is the minefield. It's almost like the show is saying, well, here's a black man carrying a white man's water like Homelander and this is what happens when you work for a white man. Eventually, he's going to kind of, or at least an evil white man, he's going to use your use you for what he wants to use you for, um, and you're letting him do it. And so I think that's what's so interesting about that, and we'll see how that plays out with A-Train next season because um, him and the Deep are the only uh, people left from the Seven because uh, Starlight clearly has left the Seven by throwing her uh, outfit out into the trash so they're going to be very curious to see what we're going to get from a train in the next season mave and homelander and starting yeah, Mae fights her way out of the van goes to uh, mother's milk to her crack it or oh, her crack at huey is hilarious which is 
you just have a neon saying that says I'm a bottom and you can raw dog me, which I thought was hilarious, but very sweet moments between her and Starlight talking about their friendship, talking about how, how it's progressed, uh, all of that, which I mentioned earlier. Um, and, but you know, Maeve has that scene with Starlight when she throws the Novichuk that is in Starlight's perfume bottle and breaks mother mother's milk's gun when they they're trying to stop them from going after uh, Homelander and Soldier Boy, or going after Homelander rather. Um, so there's a moment there between her and Starlight, and she says, oh, "God, I thought you were a hero." And Maeve says, "No one's a hero. No one is." Uh, which is really powerful moment I thought uh, in the series for sure. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, yeah, Deep kills that uh, p- potential vice presidential candidate, which leads the way for uh, for Victoria Newman. So. Victoria Newman is essentially probably going to be a villain next season. What is her whole point? And is she going to kill off Dakota Bob so that she can be the president, the female president? That is going to be interesting. Is that is that home? Does Homelander become, in essence, kind of her own personal assassin? In essence, uh, in this situation, I wonder if that is uh, going to be part of it next season. So, you know, they moved out. It seems like they moved out Edgar for now because we don't know what happened to Edgar after he got moved out uh, three or four episodes ago. So I wonder how that's going to um, show itself next season, how that storyline is going to go next season. And if Edgar is going to make a triumphant comeback to get his revenge on Victoria Newman, that's going to be fascinating to see as well. Uh, let's see. John Lee says, do you think the show will go the line of the comics at the end? For example, the White House. Also, do you think Butcher will really die in 12 to 18 months? Yeah, at the end of the finale, we find out uh, because Butcher's been using so much compound V uh, that he will die in 12 to 18 months. No, I don't think so. And I think that was just done. So but there's dramatic tension in the off season before the next season comes back. And they're going to find a way to reverse that situation don't forget that the legend is still around paul riser is still around maybe paul riser knows a way to reverse the effects of compound v because he was there you know when it was uh in its heyday so maybe he's got a way to so there's going to be options uh maybe huey figures it out i don't know there's going to be options here uh, for him to turn this thing around uh so no because carl orban is such a great part of the show he's such a great part of the show so there's no way i don't think there's any way to get rid of him and uh, yeah it, it seems like we'll, we're heading towards the white house with victoria newman who is a soup uh there now as the vice presidential candidate with dakota bob so yeah it seems like we're heading towards the white house for sure uh john lee let's see uh let's see is any uh, okay just want to make sure i didn't miss any soup uh, stream lab stream labs address is pinned in the chat if you want to send any support for uh, hanging out with me tonight and uh Got any questions you want me to ask for sure? Uh, 82 of you uh, watching right now, please hit a like on this video. Would appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, My Dirty Rat One says, I love Ashley. She's changed though by the finale. Her and the tech girl delete the footage of Maeve still being alive. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, by the end, Ashley in a moment there, where because Ashley essentially been doing Homelander's bidding once Homelander comes into power uh, in the second or third episode in that moment with her assistant. Now, I don't, I, I think that's also Ashley who is next to her. They delete the footage of mother's milk. And uh, I think Frenchie picking up Maeve there in the alley and getting her to safety. So yeah. Is she changed? Is she now going to be a force in a sense, in essence for good? Um, and you know, Homeland is going to find out. So what brutal way is he going to kill her? Because that's what usually happens. Um, so we shall see, we shall see, but yeah, maybe she has changed from the whole situation when she treats also Ashley better then I'll know she's really changed because that moment when she was like, Oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go, uh, you know, take off in the helicopters. That's just for me, the S V P S I think she says and above. So you go figure yourself out also Ashley. So I hope down the road, uh, they will, uh, change that. Uh, Phil, what's up, Phil. He's joining us there from, uh, from good old London. He's Phil. He says, yo, Roke, everyone, good morning. A happy Friday uh, down old London town. Now, not watch the boys at all yet. My bad, just pop to say hi and smash like and support. Yeah, hit that like button, please. Please, I appreciate that. Uh, John Lee says, the girl that was next to Ashley was actually one of the two tech people left in the department. Oh, right, that was her. Yes, good catch, John. So it's not also Ashley. So um, is this person who was, you know, kind of pretty freaked out by the fact that Deep went in there and fired everybody is she kind of in cahoots with Ashley to get information, to figure things out? So, and that makes sense too, because they had that video and that video of course brought to you by the tech department. So that makes sense. 
Uh, Mississippi Dog says Maeve is freaking dumb. She didn't have to jump while pushing Soldier Boy down. She could have pushed him without jumping. It's not in the script, champ. It's not in the script. That's not what they did. So it's not Maeve that's dumb. Maybe you could be mad at the writers <laughs> for that situation. All right, let's keep going. See if I missed anything. He tells Deep, yeah, to kill someone. Ashley gets mad at A Train, right, for killing one of his own kind. How ironic that is of Homelander, the white man, to tell the black man, hey, man, you're killing one of your own, that kind of thing. Um, but then Homelander says he doesn't need any of them. And again, I'm stressing this. Homelander is missing the point. The seven were his family. He's the one fucking up the family. If he was a good leader, if he was a good dad, in essence, this family would be strong. Uh, but no, they live in fear of him because he's a fucking sociopath. Um, and so he wants to blame everyone else but himself. That sounds familiar. Wants to blame everyone else but himself for all the things that are happening. So he thinks it's their fault, their incompetence, their inabilities and what have you. When in fact, it's his leadership that is destroying them from the top down. And so uh, what kind of family does he hope to have? He's so misguided in the pursuit of this family. Uh, let's see. We could have uh, Yeah, we see the Homelander stuff, watching his butcher, Soldier Boy. Yeah, right. So what do you think of the fight? I liked the fight. I thought the fight was really good. Uh, I thought Soldier Boy, I mean, coming in and essentially talk a little shit to Homelander about him being a weak uh, P-word and then uh, launching into the battle uh, with Maeve and Homelander and uh, um, Butcher holding him. And then, of course, Ryan interferes. So I like that. I like the way it was all set up. Ryan kind of using his laser blast on um, Soldier Boy and then Soldier Boy coming back and slamming ryan into the side of the wall in the cabinet with his shield no less um pulling no punches which of course causes the everything to change and homelander's in instinct is to run over to ryan to check on him ryan has that gash here but before he can spend too much time checking on ryan Maeve interferes and they starts kicking the shit out of him and they have a great battle and for, i mean homelander sticks his thumb in her eye which is tense uh, but then, of course, Butcher and Soldier Boy are out fighting in the uh, TV studio, which is uh, pretty powerful as well. Dave shattering his shield is pretty awesome, uh, which I appreciated as well. Let's see here. Uh, Colin, but Ryan checks on Ryan, who passes out. Maeve takes, attacks home, he fights Butcher, Soldier, Soldier Boy is about to slam a shield. Right. And then just about uh, just about the time as, as uh, uh, Soldier Boy is about to sl slam his shield into. Um, into butcher starlight shows up and saves the day kind of and they have their back and forth uh we see uh, kamiko go crazy in that lab on those security guards we see frenchy take another shot that leg of his uh from the bullets uh so but while she destroys everybody to maniac which was great for those of you who are young maniac is a song and flash dance and michael Cimbello. that was that was a fucking workout song since for decades i think it's still a workout song for a lot of people so such a great cardio song if you want to start running or biking to that song it works out let's see mave is getting the boast which would destroy so yeah kamiko shows up soldier boy talks to huey to almost takes the compound b right realizes talked all about all of that uh all day yeah then they all grab him and put the novachuk uh on him in, in the um that they got from the lab very reminiscent of how we saw soldier boy go down in that animated retelling of what happened there when they took him out uh crimson countess and everybody and noir and everybody took him out the twins the mind dude by putting that on his face so he's back in there and of course he's going crazy because he doesn't go back in that fucking box um and then um mave stabs homelander with that thing in his brain so is that gonna affect homelander even more i don't know um and as we said they take off down butcher and get a piece of vaude propaganda piece. yeah then we get this propaganda piece on mave from vaude corporation as if mave has died uh so that's pretty cool um and let's see here butcher is getting his diagnosis with 12 to 18 months right mother's milk's talking to janine that was really sweet him talking to janine sewing pictures to her and talking about her grandfather and all of that that was really sweet and then she says you're my hero daddy uh then starlight comes into the place we see that mave is still alive uh she's lost her power they make a funny back and forth about the pri uh, I, uh, pirate patch or the sammy davis glass eye which i don't know how many people watching the boys got that reference but i thought that was genius elena is there says they're headed to modesto they're gonna farm or do whatever and she says to him you know she may says to starlight look you don't need me anymore 
I can jump, but you can fucking fly, which is great. I love that. And then we hear Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, um, which the lyrics are quite interesting for what's happening in this finale uh, or the final episode, final uh, minutes of the finale. Uh, we see Ashley see Mother's Milk. Soldier Boy survived and is being stored now under Grace's watchful eye. So what does that mean? Does Grace now have her weapon to combat Homelander and maybe bring Ryan back home? So are we getting Jensen Ackles back next season? That's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, because now that Grace has him, how can she deploy him when she needs to? Um, Cassandra, yeah, wrote a book. She's exposing Kevin. Um, Starlight's tossing her costume. They all vote on her being one of the boys. Butcher stands there slurping like Michael Madsen from Reservoir Dogs. That's what I thought. Uh, that was a reference to when he was leaning against the thing, slurping that thing. But then Dakota Bob is chosen uh, uh, as uh, his running mate, as, as I said earlier already, um, Victoria Newman. And then Homelander shows up at a rally as they topple Soldier Boy statue, still say F Starlight. Homelander introduces them to his son. Yeah, there we go. So that, that was everything. In the finale, I liked it a lot. I really did. I had a great time watching this one. Uh, I liked the uh, exchanges, the dialogue, the back and forth, the progression of their characters. And look, you know, you may be mad that they didn't take out Homelander. You're not going to take out Homelander. It's, it, you have to keep him going for the series um, to keep having him as an antagonist. The challenge becomes every season for the boys. And the challenge gets, I mean, it seems like the, uh, the high wire gets higher and higher every time because how do you keep him being an interesting antagonist when he's doing the same kind of things how does he keep getting away how does he keep through it so i wonder in season four how they're going to keep that fresh because they really did this season by bringing in soldier boy so the build was we got to get the soldier boy then once we got soldier boy we got to get soldier boy to homelander but he's got to kill off his team first that allows a few episodes to go past as kind of a delaying tactic if you're writing an over you know writing an overall arc of the season so okay boom you have them confront and everything goes down so what's going to happen next season how are you going to keep homelander fresh how is the ryan situation going to work how is butcher now that he's got the compound v stuff or the, he's got the compound v stuff residue that he's dealing with how's that going to play itself out does is mave done as somebody said already earlier that she's not coming back okay fine she's not coming back but maybe for an episode uh, what's what's that? How's that going to show itself? Starlight now being part of the boys, she has her power, so that gives the boys even more of a leg up in the situation. And who is going to be on the new team with Homelander and the Deep, and possibly A Train? A Train wasn't in that picture, so I don't know if A Train has left the team or not. Who is going to take their places? So that's going to be very curious because I think it was a bit of a letdown this season. If there's one criticism this season, it was bringing in people like Lori Holden uh, and the twins and the mind dude. And they, you don't really get enough extended time with them to understand how they saw um, soldier boy, their experiences, especially Crimson Countess. That was, I mean, Lori Holden is a damn good actress bringing her in to uh, have a couple of scenes and then do that weird thing with Seth Rogen. I, I, I could have gone my whole life without watching Seth Rogen simulate uh masturbating but you know we got it on the show so um i didn't need to see it but there it was but it's such a weird thing to do uh with her to not have her have uh, some more scenes some more situations where she's fighting people off showing her power more so i was a little disappointed by that because i like Lori holden loved her on walking dead loved her in the majestic loved her in a number of other shows or tvs uh or movies rather that she's been in so i was hoping to get a little bit more and that's kind of a criticism i had this season for sure. So if we get new team members, I mean, Ia Cash was so good at Stormfront last season. Um, hopefully those team members who come in and the actors who get cast as them really bring some really interesting approaches to these characters and um, charismatic uh, characters, charming characters, uh, while also being ruthless. Or maybe they're all going to be going through the situation with Homelander being shaped by him. Is he going to create, in essence, his own um gestapo for lack of a better term or his own ss in the uh in the seven i don't know so it's going to be fascinating to see how that all plays and what role is ashley going to play in all of that as it seems like she's going to be playing both both sides so i wonder about that 
Uh, let's see. I'm actually uh, really surprised that Soldier Boy didn't die. Yeah, I was a little surprised by that as well. But clearly, they felt Jensen Ackles was doing a great job with the role, or else they would have probably iced him. So I think he, he you know, they like what he's doing with the role, and we'll just see. We'll see how that plays itself out. As I said, now that he's under Grace's uh, control in season four, uh, Whale Watchers Media says if Noir comes back, it would probably be at the very end of the series to kill Homelander or Soldier Boy or both. Yeah, I could see Noir killing Soldier Boy, not Homelander as much, even though Homelander did take out his guts. He tried to, but I think Noir might be dead. I mean, the fact that he's holding his helmet leads me to believe that um, Homelander went back, ripped off the helmet, made sure he was fucking dead, and walked off. So I'd be very surprised if he just took some random helmet out of Noir's uh, locker room or Noir's room. Um, so that seems to indicate to me that he's dead, but we shall see um all right thanks my dirty rat one for subscribing um yeah yeah the, he says i can't wait to see if they bring in a few more from the comics yeah yeah, yeah. i'm, I'm gonna be very curious to see that as well and we had the boys diabolical which was an interesting animated series if you guys haven't watched that you should definitely watch that uh and the uh there's a college version of the boys coming because if you remember reading the boys comics there's this whole younger version of the boys who have soups and what who are superpowers and they do some pretty fucked up stuff so i'm gonna be very curious to see if that becomes a spinoff and maybe one or two of those kind of jump in between shows that'll be curious uh, on my end as well but look I, I loved the acting all through this finale all through this season i thought the writing was tight I thought the storylines were great very believable made sense the pacing of it throughout the whole season worked so well the direction of this was great yeah i gotta give love to the director of the finale here do they have her name i know it was a woman do they have her name here oh damn it i didn't write down the name of the director so but yeah it was i think it was a woman so she did a great job directing uh the finale and i liked the directors all around through the whole season uh enjoyed how we kind of fleshed out this world a little bit more explored more of the levels of these relationships some of the history some of the old stuff some of the new stuff uh, all of that works so well. Dug the action sequences, dug the fights, loved the surprises. The gore was in the perfect amounts. And don't forget, as we're talking about this finale, don't forget the opening 10 minutes of the first episode of this season. Good God almighty. I screamed my face off. So um, <laughs> because no dude, that's uh, that's just something a dude can't watch and have any kind of semblance of being okay watching. Um, I wonder how they're going to top that next season. i am be very curious to see how to they top that next season. So, so overall, yeah, really enjoyed it. I give it what about 4.25 uh, cowboy hats out of five cowboy hats. Uh, I thought it really hit the mark and uh, was a blast to watch. And I thought everybody brought it acting wise uh, as well. And want to give love uh, to everybody in the cast here. Of course, we've mentioned Carl Orban already. Jack Quaid was great. Anthony Starr, Aaron Moriarty, Jesse T. Usher, Laz Alonzo, by the way, Laz Alonzo, I think, did a great job this season. They put a lot of weight on him in terms of the storylines and the pressure and him having to play the more the kind of restrained situation type things. I think he did a great job. You know, he's got Butcher, who essentially is, uh, you know, he, he's his equal in terms of the leadership of the team. And he has to kind of pull Butcher back at times. Plus, he's being, uh, uh, you know, trying to deal with the fact that his um, wife is with a white dude and a fucking nebbish white guy. And the guy is now taking him, his, his daughter to these rallies. Oh, and Todd's reaction. Like Todd is a, Todd is a dick. So Todd was a shithead to take Janine without telling mother's milk to a ride like that, where there could be violence. And then Todd was an asshole for shooting his mouth off about uh, mother milk's parenting. And then Todd cheering that on. Essentially the show is making a statement that these geeky, nerdy overweight out of shape motherfuckers who follow uh trump and are part of the maga crazy crew they are in essence adapting their strength to um and, and believe that they're as strong as the people they're connecting to they live off it's no difference when you see wrestlers right like you see the fans like i i host a pro wrestling show i'm like you know people a lot of a lot of fans i see are out of shape people and so be it they connect to these wrestlers who are in phenomenal shape they sense a kinship they support them and they in essence feel like okay this guy is like i'm connected to this guy and that's what you see here they're showing you that this guy who feels is pretty powerless in his life probably finds some strength through homelander or this guy has a very strong feeling about people 
and he's a judgmental jerk. And so Homelander represents the extension of that in a powerful way, being able to use his power. So I think all there's commentary there on Todd's reaction to Homelander after he kills that per I mean, kills that person for daring to throw something at him and Ryan. Um, yeah. So I mean, it's going to be very curious to see how that plays itself out in the next season as well. What happens with Huey and uh, Starlight? Do we see a marriage in the future? Uh, what's going to happen with that? Kamiko and Frenchie? What's going to be that relationship? Is little Nina going to come back? Are there other people from uh, Frenchie's past or even Kamiko's past that might come back? Uh, very curious to see. And of course, Butcher. How's Butcher going to deal with the fact that Ryan is now with um, Homelander, considering what he promised Becca? So, so much uh, is going to be explored next season that I'm, I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so I think they made him a teacher show that there are maggots in all walk of life. That's for sure. That's for sure. I absolutely agree with that. Sarah Boyd. Yes, it was Sarah Boyd. Thank you, Haunted underscore Autumn. Yes, Sarah Boyd directed. She did a fantastic job directing this finale. I really enjoyed it. So wanted to give her some love there in the end. So uh, <laughs> I was kind of hoping that Butcher would have gotten Maeve pregnant. No, no, no. She's got a relationship. They had was a, you know, a momentary uh, expression of frustration and sexual desire nothing wrong with that so um let's see what's he say mississippi dog says charlie's power baby cringe why does soldier boy just stand there while she's taking her oh lord dude it's in the script you're driving me nuts with some of your comments tonight my man um all right so let's let's wrap it up there i gotta get out of here thank you so much for watching me live this was my reaction and review live here after watching the finale hope you enjoyed it would appreciate you hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel down below if you haven't subscribed hit that subscribe button hit that bell button so you see when i'm dropping content just like this surprise content uh here on the show on the channel rather would appreciate your support for sure make sure you follow me over there on all the social media at the roca says on twitter instagram and tiktok and the outlaw nation on twitch going to be doing some more stuff here i've discovered some games i will be playing on twitch my uh, patrons have been pushing me to get on Twitch to play some games. So I will be doing that very, very soon. And speaking of the patrons, if you want to be a patron supporter of the Outlaw Nation, head on over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash John Roca. See all the multiple tiers that I've got out there for you. And at the $50 level, you get 30 minutes of one-on-one -on -one with me every month. At the $100 level, you get an hour with me. So if you got writer's block, you got some therapy stuff, you, got some, you have questions about uh, film criticism, questions about a movie or anything like that, Sit and chat with me for an hour once a month. You can do that or half an hour. Uh, and we've got levels at 25 and 10 and 5 and 1, so you can you know be part of that as well. So there are there's uh, enough levels for everybody and whatever tier uh, you are looking for and benefits that you are looking for. We do two hangouts a week, one on Discord, one on Zoom on camera. So uh, that's the kind of uh, commitment I have there for the patrons, and I appreciate and respect them supporting everything you do. Plus... For those of you who know that the Schmodown is gone, if you want to come be a part of the patron, uh, Patreon here, you can participate in the Outlaw Nation Movie Trivia League, which is a fun trivia league we started that is behind the paywall for people who are patrons to play each other in trivia stuff. We write the questions. We call the matches. It's different style than the Schmodown, and we just have fun. And so it's a, it's a cool thing, too, if you want to be a part of that. So just pitching it on my end. All right. Thank you all so much. You guys are the best. I appreciate you hanging out with me tonight on a Thursday night. Go and get some rest. And for those of you who are hanging out with me in the morning, like Phil on, in the British morning, uh, I hope you all have a good rest of your day. And I'll talk to you next time with another brand new reaction or review video here from the Outlaw Nation. Take care until then. Season four of the boys coming uh, sometime on Amazon Prime or Prime Video very, very soon. Peace.